Hello students. In our last session, we were discussing the chapter number 7, Getting to Know Plants. So, what we have studied in our last session? We have studied about leaf. What we have studied? We have seen the structure of the leaf. What does the leaf consist of? Leaf consists of a petiole, lamina. We can see the veins on the leaf and the midrib. What is petiole? The part of the leaf that is attached to the stem is known as petiole. What is lamina? The broad green portion of the leaf is known as lamina. On the leaf, we can see the different lines. What these lines are known as? These lines are known as veins. In the leaf, there is a prominent line in the middle. This line is known as a midrib. The design that is made by the veins on the leaf is known as a leaf venation. We have seen two different types of leaf venation. What are the two different types of leaf venation? First we have studied about reticulate venation. What is reticulate venation? When we see the irregular or the net like design of the vein on the leaf such venation is known as the reticulate venation and if the veins are arranged parallel to each other such type of venation is known as parallel venation then we have studied about the transpiration process what is transpiration Sometimes water comes out of the leaf in the form of water vapor. This process is known as transpiration process. Then we have also studied about the photosynthesis process. What is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is the process in which the leaves prepare their own food in the presence of sunlight and a green colored pigment known as a chlorophyll. In this process, leaf use water and carbon dioxide while oxygen is released during this process. I hope all the topics that we have studied about the leaf in our previous session is clear to you. So, in this session, we are going to discuss about the roots. Now let us study the roots. Where are roots present? Roots are present in the soil. Roots absorb water and minerals from the soil and stem conducts these to the leaves and the other parts of the plant. We have studied earlier that stem helps in the conduction of water and minerals to the leaves and the other parts that are attached to the stem. But from where do the stem gets water and minerals? The roots absorbs water and minerals from the soil that are transported by the stem to the different parts of the plant. So, now we will perform the different activities which, in which we will study the different functions of the root. Let's start with the first activity. To perform this activity, here are some requirements. What we will require? Two pots, some soil, kurpi for digging, blade or a pair of scissors and water. How we will do this activity? Select two plants of same kind and dig them out with the roots. 
what we have to do is we have to select the two plants that are of same kind and we have to dig them out from the roots plant one of them in pot a we have to plant one of the plant as it is in pot a cut off the roots from the other plant and plant it in pot b now from the other plant we have to cut their roots and plant it in pot b water them regularly observe the plants after a week we have to water both the plants regularly and we have to observe them after a week what we will observe the plant that have roots will grow properly while the plants in which we have cut the roots that will not grow this shows that for plant to grow the roots are very important now let us study the another activity to perform this activity what are the requirements we will require the seeds of a gram and mace cotton wool bowl and some water how this activity is being carried out to perform this activity take two katoris or a bowl place some wet cloth in them what we have to do is we have to take the two bowls or the katoris and place some wet cotton or a wool cloth put 3 to 4 seeds of a gram in one and mace in the other then in the bowl put 3 to 4 seeds of a gram in one bowl and 3 to 4 seeds of a mace in the another bowl keep the cotton wet by sprinkling water every day then we have to sprinkle the water on the cotton so that the cotton will remain wet we have to do this till the sprouts have grown into the young plants after a week try to separate the young plants from the cotton was it easy to separate the cotton from the roots so after the week when the young plant has grown from the cotton try to separate it will it be easy for us to separate the cotton from the roots no it will not be easy to separate the cotton from the roots why because the roots help in holding the plant firmly with the cotton they hold it very tightly roots help in holding the plant firmly to the soil similarly as we have seen in the activity the roots hold the cotton very firmly the same way the roots hold the soil they anchor the soil so in this activity we have seen that the roots help in holding the plant they anchors the soil the two activities that we have studied we have seen the two different functions of the root in the first activity we have seen that the roots are important for the growth of the plants without roots there will be no growth of the plants therefore roots are very necessary for the growth of the plants in the second activity we have seen that roots help in holding the plant firmly with the soil root anchors the soil now in this activity we will study the different types of roots in the previous activity we have used gram seeds and the mace seeds now see how the gram plant root look like and the mace plant root look like do the roots of both the plant look same no there is a difference in the root of the gram plant and in the root of the mace plant there are two types of root one is the tap root and another is the fibrous root 
you can see the difference in in the roots from the image let us study what are tap roots the main root is called the tap root and the smaller roots are called as the lateral root you can see in the image we can distinguish between the tap roots and the lateral roots the main root that you see is known as the tap root while the smaller roots that are emerging out from the tap root are called as the lateral roots this type of the root system can be seen in parsley turnip carrot dandelion beetroot etc so this plant shows the tap root system now what are fibrous root they do not have the main root we can't see any difference like in the tap root there was the main root in the fibrous root there is no main root all the roots are seen similar we can't see any difference between them here all the roots are seen similar fibrous root system is seen in onions tomatoes sweet potato corns peas etc roots absorb water and minerals from the soil and stem conducts these to the leaves and the other parts of plant we have seen that the roots absorbs water and minerals from the soil and stem then conducts and transport these to the leaf and the other parts of the plant the leaves prepare the food this food travels through the stem and is stored in the different parts of the plant in our last session we have seen by the photosynthesis process leaves prepare their food so when the leaf prepare their food the food is travel through the stem and is stored in the different parts of the plant from this we understand that the stem serves as a two way traffic first the stem conducts water and minerals from the roots in the upward direction to the different parts of the plant and the second way the leaf prepare the food the food is then transported to the different parts of the plant through the stem therefore the stem serves as a two way traffic now let's see the relationship between the leaf venation and the type of roots leaf venation and the type of roots are interestingly related with each other leaf venation and the type of roots in plants are related to each other the plant with the fibrous roots have parallel venation so those plants in which the roots are fibrous in that plant the leaf will have the parallel venation for example in banana maize rice etc while the plants with the reticulate venation are likely to have the tap roots and the plants in which we see the reticulate venation in the leaf that plants have the tap roots for example rose carrot radish etc so the plants that have the reticulate venation have the tap roots and the plants that have the parallel venation have fibrous roots now let us study about the flowers the prominent parts of the open flowers are known as petals so what are petals in the open flowers the prominent part that we see are known as petals in the buds we can't see petals different flowers have the petals of different colors so we have studied earlier that there are variety of flowers with the different colors so different colors of the flower is due to different colors of the petals in some of the plants the petals are joined together you can see in the image how the petals are joined together 
This is the example of Datura flower. The small leaf like structure that we see that are attached to the flower is known as sepals. So what are sepals? The small leaf like structure that are attached to the flower are known as sepals. Now let's study the inner part of the flowers. To study the inner part of the flowers, the sepals and the petals are removed. The inner part of the flower consists of stamens and pistils. What are stamens? Stamens are the male part of the flower. Stamen has two parts that is anther and filament. Now what is pistil? The pistil is the female part of the plant. Pistil consists of ovary style and stigma. Pistil is the innermost part of the flower. Ovary is the lowermost and the swollen part of the pistil. So, ovary is the lowermost and it is the swollen part of the pistil. When we cut the ovary, we see the small bead-like structure inside the ovary. These small bead-like structure are known as ovules. So what does the flower consist of? Flower consists of the petals, sepals, stamen and pistil. The number of sepals, petals, stamens and pistil may also be different in different flowers. We see many flowers. But all the plants do not have the same number of sepals, petals in them. Some of these parts may even be absent in some flowers. So it's not necessary that the flower consists of all these parts. In some of the flowers, some of the parts are absent. The flower that consists of sepals, petals, stamens and pistils are known as the complete flower. See, in the hibiscus flower, five petals can be seen. And in the rose, there are many petals. The sepals in the rose plant are five. The rose contains five sepals. I hope you have understood the roots and the flowers in the today's session.